Hello, everybody. Today, we are delighted to bring you an exclusive interview with Everton Vargas, another one of the World Bioeconomy Forum's advisory board members. Everton Vieira Vargas is a Brazilian diplomat and former ambassador to Brazil to the European Union, holding the post of Brazilian ambassador to Germany from 2009 to 2013 and Argentina from 2013 to 2016. During his career, Everton has been political undersecretary general and director of the Department of Environment and Special Issues at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Brazil. At the Ministry in Brazil, he has also been Head of Science and Technology Division, Coordinator of Summit of the Americas, and Head of the Environment Division. From 2007 and 2008, Everton was part of the G8 meetings in Japan and Germany, where he was Sherpa to the Brazilian President. Everton, welcome. We are honoured to have you with us today. Thank you very much, Mark, and great pleasure to be here with you and your audience. Excellent. Well, you are a man of many, much knowledge of the Amazon and of Brazil, so I think we'll go straight into the questions. Um, you've been heavily involved in the international conservation, sustainability and climate change discussions on behalf of the Brazilian government in the course of your career. Can you tell us what progress has been made when it comes to the circular bioeconomy sector in the country up until now? Let me, let me tell you in the beginning that uh, actually the issue of uh, circular bioeconomy uh, is a quite recent concept. When uh, I start, I've started in this, in this business of sustainable development in 1988 when I was uh, assigned to be part of the Brazilian delegation to the United Nations. I spent four years there. And in these years, uh, my biggest assignment within the mission was exactly to be the Brazilian negotiator for the resolution uh, resolutions of the General Assembly 1988-1989 that led to the convening of the uh, United Nations Conference on Environment and Development that took place in Rio in June 1992. I must tell you that, uh, as you certainly uh, uh, and your, your, your audience also will recall those that are of our age at least, my age at least, you, know, you are much younger, uh, uh, that uh, at that time uh, we were discussing a lot about uh, uh, possibility of global uh, global warming. We were talking about uh, loss of biodiversity. We were talking about deforestation, burnings, including in the Amazon area. So uh, this conference was thought to be uh, a celebration of the 20 years of the Stockholm Conference on, on Human Environment that took place in 1972. Actually, the agenda that was building up at that time in view of the publishing of the Brundtland Report, Our Common Future, was so big that uh, the, the, the 1972 conference would be much more a reference than a cause for celebration. Uh, we actually uh, started a huge uh, uh, enterprise in multilateral affairs with the negotiation of two conventions, the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Convention on Climate Change. Uh, alongside this, uh, a, an ambitious program uh, of action called Agenda 21 was also uh, negotiated in the period between 1990 and 1992. Uh, and, uh, and two more declarations, which were not uh, uh, legally binding, but were politically very much uh, strong, uh, like the Rio Declaration on uh, Environment and Development and the uh, Statement on Principles uh, of Forests, uh, were uh, also negotiated and 
approved by consensus. I must tell you that uh, since then, no other conf uh, multilateral conference has led to such a huge uh, political uh, engagement of all countries and has found uh, such uh, a consensus among the delegations. Since then, we had other important conferences, I will not deny that, but none of them had the impact and the ambition of the uh, United Nations Conference on Environment and Development that took place in Rio in 1992. Uh, on the, your specific question, I must tell you that uh, at that time, we spoke a lot about alternative energy. We, took a, we, we spoke a lot of, uh, resource, of biological and genetic resource and their potential. We talk a lot about uh, uh, wastes, how to, to deal with wastes, and so on. It was an important, huge, complex uh, uh, agenda. And how to enact that agenda? The big, big challenge was there because it, it, it implied uh, from one side the political engagement of all governments, and at the same time, in an agreement regarding the inequalities that uh, are in the international structure. And this inequality was particular between those countries that had the, the resources and those countries that didn't have those, the resources and technology to do that. So it was a, a major uh, endeavor. Uh, at, the, at the end, we, we arrived to uh, a set of rules both in the conventions and in the, in, in the Agenda 21 in order to uh, uh, establish the basis for uh, sustainable development uh, cooperation. And what do we have today? I, uh, although we still have huge challenges, although there is a lot to do, I uh, will give you a, a, an optimistic, so to say, uh, uh, view, because I think we did much more than in 1989 when uh, the United Nations adopted Resolution 44228 that convened the conference, or in 1992 uh, uh, when we had the, the, the opening of the both conventions of biological diversity and climate change uh, for signature, we didn't have the idea that would, we would make such, uh, such progress. Uh, if you take, for example, energy, uh, very few people at that time thought very, uh, concretely about how alternative energy would actually work. Uh, nobody, if somebody said at that time that Germany in the beginning of uh, the second decade of the 2000s would, uh, uh, would, would renounce to nuclear energy, uh, people would say that that person was out of uh, his or her mind. And now we have Germany uh, on a clear policy on, on alternative energy in many other countries, China, for example. I remember the, 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 in the, the, in the uh, climate conference, the delegate for China, uh, Professor Zhou, who uh, said at one moment, how do, you, do you, how do you believe a country with one billion people will, will solve these problems? You need to, to take into account. Yeah? And now China is one of the countries that is leading the world in terms of alternative energy and in terms of uh, electric cars and so on. Of course, a lot is, is still to be done. Let's not forget that. But when you look back and you look today, we made a very significant progress. Excellent. Thank you for a comprehensive and uh, the sharing of your wisdom there. There's a lot, a lot going into that. And I think one of the really interesting things is that there's a positive side to this. It's not all just negative. We are making progress. And actually, we're making progress in a big way, which is very massively important. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to move now on to the Amazon area. Um, so, so the Amazon region is of vital importance to the general health of the planet due to its immense size 
and of course its biodiversity of flora and fauna. Um, what does the future hold for the region when it comes to circular bioeconomy challenges and opportunities? Um, let me tell you two things. First, I think that the future of the Amazon, the, the future uh, in terms of uh, uh, economic and social progress in the, in the region is inextricably uh, uh, link it to the development of, bio, of its bioeconomy. But as you know, Brazil is a huge country and, and Amazon represents uh, 5.1 million square kilometers in a country of 8.5 million square kilometers. So uh, Amazon itself, I think, I, I would dare to say, I don't have the precise number here, but I would dare to say is at almost the same size of Western Europe. So you can imagine how it is to deal with such a region. But in order to deal with that, we need to look at what opportunities we have in due to technology, to resources, and uh, to institutional strengthening. So it's necessary that we go on this path of uh, bioeconomy. But the future in the Amazon is, before everything, is a political one. You could very easily ask me, well, you are telling me all this about Amazon, but in 30 years ago or, or more, uh, Amazon was in the headlines of all newspapers. I remember in 1989, the New York Times wrote an editorial called Who is Burning the Amazon? And it was a, 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 a tremendous editorial against the Brazilian government at that time. And you could say, well, <laughs> more than 30 years you are, you are saying that the future of the Amazon is political and things need to be done, etc. Yes, that's true. But the region is a, I would say, a huge challenge to, not only to Brazil, but to mankind. And uh, I think the only other region I would say is as challenging for the Amazon is Antarctica, because it's also a huge territory with uh, mutatis mutandis, the same, the same difficulties, yeah? uh, ice in the Antarctica, the, the, the rainforest in Brazil, with the, with the problem for, uh, for Amazon that uh, you have almost 30 million people living in, the, in that region. So I think that in order to, to, to get the uh, bioeconomy as a meaningful force in terms of transforming the Amazon, we need to have a truly engagement of uh, governments at all levels and also of private sector. We have seen this uh, here in Brazil for, for many years. Uh, unfortunately, at this, at this time, uh, the federal government is not at the same pace as the governments in the Amazon, but we have seen a uh, uh, how can I say, uh, the, the, the so Brazilian society is more mature about the need to conserve the Amazon. And the, the, this is not a question of prestige. It's not a question of image for Brazil. It's a question of national interest. If the Amazon uh, is destroyed, the a significant part of the country and of its options for the society will be destroyed. As you know, the recent, the recent uh, uh, IPCC report has shown that temperature may, may, uh, may rise in the Amazon, uh, uh, that uh, uh, the rainfall regime may be altered. If the rainfall regime in the Amazon is altered, the whole area where Brazil has the major production of grains and, and beef will be altered and Brazil will lose the, the, the pillar of its economy nowadays, which is uh, uh, agriculture. 
so it's a question that is not only a question of being uh, uh, environmentally correct or politically correct. It's a question of a strategic interest. It's our survival as a society and as a country and as a country that is engaged in the world. Brazil, along its history, if you take our, our history in terms of uh, our engagement in the, in the, in the international affairs, uh, we all, always uh, recognize that we, we are a developing country, but we never uh, 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 stayed in a position that we were saying that the affairs of the world were not up to us. No, we live in a world that is also ours. And we want to be actors in this world and help this world to be a better place for all mankind. And uh, so the, the issue of the Amazon is within this kind of, uh, uh, of reasoning. Excellent. Again, a fantastically comprehensive answer and some stark warnings within there. So mm -hmm. um, really, thank you very much for that. Um, now, we are going to be going to the Amazon. Uh, the World Bioeconomy Forum will actually be held in Belém in the Paris State in October. What are your hopes and dreams for the event? And how do you see the discussions affecting the future of the circular bioeconomy in Brazil? Uh, I think the forum will blow a new wind within the Amazon. I think this is... This is an important thing to bear in mind. I think that it was a great idea that the government of the state of Pará decided to host uh, this important meeting there. Uh, uh, I, I do believe that uh, the discussions that we will have there uh, with a very diverse group of people, people from government, people from acad academy, from uh, people from uh, press and from uh, uh, in, uh, businessmen and so on. This discussion will be extremely fruitful for, for the Amazon. And uh, I must say to you that right now, the Brazilian society is being uh, more informed about this meeting that will take place in a month time, almost in Belém. Uh, my... my my uh, assessment is that uh, after this, this uh, uh, forum, uh, bioeconomy will not be the same, neither in Amazon nor in Brazil. And, uh, uh, it will, but we need to know, we need to bear in mind one thing as far as Brazil is concerned. Uh, Brazil uh, is, as you all know, a, a huge country. It's a very complex country to, to, to govern. But... Uh, I think that, uh, and, but no, and we have, I think, uh, something that is very important as far as the country uh, uh, is concerned, that we have different, di di different regions, different physiognomies uh, in this country. So the, 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 the recipe for uh, uh, promoting bioeconomy in the Amazon is not the same as that we have in the south of Brazil, that is a region much similar to Spain or, it, or South Italy or Portugal, if you wish, in terms, of, uh, uh, in terms of landscape, in terms of climate and so on, okay? So uh, we will have to try to fit the bioeconomy to the needs of, of uh, uh, the Amazon in particular to its, to its people. And bioeconomy is not only the question of bio-based products. Bio-based products is, are, are critical, of course. They are the essence of bioeconomy. But they, the, the way how we we'll treat, uh, treat them is uh, very much uh, uh, in the heart of the uh, 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 culture of indigenous peoples and of traditional communities. So we need to harness this kind of cultural uh, element and process it and give the necessary recognition, including in, the, in terms of remuneration to those people who detain this knowledge in order to go ahead. We have already several examples of this and the, in the forum, we will be able to show this. We, we uh, even 
uh, we'll have the participation of two startups uh, from uh, the state of Pará, which will show how uh, they are doing with their, uh, their products uh, from bioeconomy and, and develop a new bioeconomy. But this is, is just the, the, how we, we can show the world that there are many, many opportunities, many potentials. And the, the result of the uh, forum for us should be more investment, more research, because Amazon is not well known by Brazilians themselves. So we need to invest more in knowledge. Our un universities, our labs, they need to be more engaged in, in, in revealing to the world what do we have, how can we process that in loco, create uh, employment, better education for uh, the people who live there. And by this, by this way, uh, uh, narrow down the inequalities that in, unfortunately is still, are still deep and still prevail in the Amazon area. Wonderful. You've made me look forward to the, um, the event in Belém even more now. So <laughs> oh, definitely. That, that, that's really good news. Well, well, thank you very much indeed for a, a great um, and all-encompassing interview with, uh, with a lot of points to take away there. So, so Everton, thank you very much indeed for your oh, time. My thank pleasure. My, my pleasure. Thank you very much for the invitation. I hope to see you in Belém. In I hope time. I will be there. Okay, all of you. Okay, <laughs> all the okay. best. Thanks. Okay, all the best. Thank you very much, Mark. Cheers.